Welcome everyone to the first digital sustainable living festival. This year is our 10 year anniversary for this festival. And today we have Jamie Granquist with Bike Link here to share with us some information. So welcome, Jamie. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, super excited to be part of the LES a Sustainable Living Festival. We've been around for the first couple of years on the uh, side of the street down in the rail yard. Um, and now we're uh, going online and taking our show on the road that way. So thanks for having me. We are happy that you're here. So can you give me a little information on Bike Link and um, just kind of go through what is Bike Link? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys so that you can kind of see uh, how this looks. Um, so Bike Link essentially is the City of Lincoln's bike share program. Uh, so what you can do is we have 21 stations and 110 bicycles and you mainly located throughout downtown Lincoln but also on uh, all three of UNL campuses. You can check out a bike and you can ride it around. We have hour-long trips so you can check out a casual pass that gives you 24 hours of access uh, for hour-long trips a visiting Voyager Pass, which is 72 hours of access for hour long trips. And then we also have longer term memberships, depending on what you're into. So if you're a monthly member, or an annual member, um, that gives you those hour long trips in that whole entire time frame. So that's kind of what we're looking at for Bike Link and the Bike Share program. Okay, and how long has Bike Link been around? Yeah, so Bike Link's been around for two years. We launched in April of 2018. Um, right. And you know, going going strong. Had eighty five thousand rides in just over two and two years. So doing really well. Lincoln embraces the uh, active transportation lifestyle. Oh, that's awesome. That is really cool. So, um, how much energy would it take to run one of those bikes? Or can you tell me about the sustainability messaging that comes with being part of the biking program? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. I think I'm sharing my screen with you guys again. There we go. So yeah, so we have 21 stations throughout downtown and like I said on all three UNL campuses. Uh, we have 20 stations that are solar powered um, and so what that does is obviously the, the sun each day recharges those stations so that they can check out bikes in and check bikes out and operate the uh, computer onboard computer system. Um, and then one of our stations is powered by a, a traditional AC power and that one's in the Haymarket area, uh, mainly because the streets down in the Haymarket are a lot closer together and the buildings are uh, quite a bit uh, closer to the street as well. So it just didn't, the solar, uh, the solar exposure down there was not as great. So that's why we have one station that is AC powered. Okay. And have you ever thought about expanding Bike LNK or Bike Link? Is it Bike Link or Bike LNK? So yeah, so it's Bike Link and it's pronounced Link uh, because we wanted people to kind of think about uh, the connections between things, right? And so that's uh, that's kind of why that that moniker exists. But obviously, people know uh, the Lincoln Airport as LNK, and so totally understandable. Um, but it kind of brands it as Lincoln Zone, right? Right. And so I apologize if I mess up here no. and there. <laughs> you are fine. Have you thought about um, just expanding bike, bike link um, throughout other parts of Lincoln or is it mostly just focused downtown? Yeah, so we have 110 bicycles um, and those are interspersed essentially throughout those 21 stations. And uh, I kind of am skipping around here, but um, you can kind of see the map. This is the map of uh, the trail system and downtown Lincoln. And so you can kind of see that we're very concentrated down in that downtown area. Um, to have a good usage, useful bike share program, you wanna make sure that you have those bike share stations within a couple of blocks of each other. And then that way it makes it very convenient for people to uh, do that first mile, last mile connection type of thing that you have in that congested area with all of the people trying to come and go um, in a very limited space. And so, uh, you know, obviously expansion is, is definitely one of those things we would be interested in. Um, However, it's just dependent on funding and, and everything that goes along with those kind of things. And so uh, we definitely would be interested in that at some point. Uh, but, you know, we're always trying to see what we can do with the bikes that we have and the stations that we have. So um, that's kind of how that, that goes. And can you tell me how, um, how do the bicycles work? I know they're solar powered, but how does that actually work? Yeah, so I'll give you a shot here. Um, so essentially the bicycles are uh, 105 of them are traditional normal pedal bikes like you would 
uh, have in your garage most of the time. Um, and then we do have five electric bikes that are here right now on a demo basis just to see how they do. Um, and so what that does is when a user pedals, it's almost kind of like if your mom or dad were to uh, put their hand on your back and just kind of give you a little push when you were learning. Um, it's still all you, but it's just you a little bit more fit and a little bit faster. Right. Um, and so those bikes see about three to four times usage of the regular bikes, because if you walk up to a station and obviously you can see we have different kinds of bikes with different sponsors on them. But, um, you know, if, if it costs you the same amount of money to ride a traditional bike, which maybe you already have at home or maybe you've ridden before and you know what it's like, but you want to try something new like an e-bike, um, it doesn't cost you anymore. And you get the same benefits um, from riding bikes throughout downtown. You get the same, uh, you know, sustainable you know, active transportation, mm -hmm. good for the environment kind of thing. And so it definitely just kind of allows you to experience Lincoln in a different way. Absolutely. So who do you mostly see riding your bikes? Is it moms and dads? Is it college students? Is it everyone? So our users, um, they're basically like you and me, right? Like it's people trying to get from here to there. It's people going to the theater. It's people riding to school. It's people going to work. Um, and so our users, we do have a user survey that we do uh, every year. Our users are very 50-50 split, male and female. Our average user is about 22 to 25 years old. Uh, usually a professional works downtown or is a student at one of the, the universities or schools around that area. And so um, you, you see all kinds of people riding the bikes, but you know, obviously there are certain uh, demographics that, that seem to really take to bike share um, a little bit more readily than others. And so a lot of that um, tends to be university students. Okay, and you were saying you take statistics every year. What are some of those statistics that you that you share. Yeah, yeah, so we do. We ask people, what are they replacing with a bike share trip? Are they replacing a walking trip? Are they replacing a car trip? Um, are they replacing a bus trip? And so um, those kind of things are the things that we ask. Uh, most of our users are replacing a single occupant short vehicle trip. Um, so instead of pulling your car out of the parking garage and riding, you know, and driving to get lunch, they're taking a bike instead. Or if a college student happens to live just outside of downtown, they're hopping on a bike and taking that to campus instead of getting in their car and trying to find parking. And so we see a really good demographic um, about replacing those single use car trips, those short car trips. Um, mm -hmm. And then we also see a fair amount of people who are replacing those longer type walking trips, right? Because they can get somewhere faster um, and so it's a time saver for some people too um, you know so instead of you know taking 20 minutes to walk to work um, you know you're essentially on a bike for about seven um, and so that's kind of helpful too it makes people a little bit uh, able to be more productive and do more in less time so i'm sure and i just thought of this question do you see a change in the weather like it i'm sure you're busier in the summer than you are in the winter have you been able to track any of that yeah, so we have all that kind of data and um, our busiest times are in the spring and the fall um, because, you know, obviously it's it's around 70 degrees. Everybody loves that, right? The sun's out, the breeze is cool um, and stuff. We do pretty well in the summer too. Uh, if you ride a bike, it kind of is a naturally cooling effect, um, you know, because you're going a little bit faster. Um, in the winter, we still have rides. Obviously, the ridership is a, is a little bit lower, but we still have, we've, we still have over uh, a thousand rides every month, even in the dog days of, of February, where it's just not pleasant sometimes. Um, and I think that's attributed to a few things. Um, people still have to get places, right? Like that's, right. Well, we, we still have to go places. Um, and then downtown is a really great place to um, bike. They do a great job of keeping the streets relatively clean. Uh, they, you know, we clean off the kiosks right away in the morning so that people can uh, ride bikes reliably. Uh, and so I think it's just a lot of teamwork that goes on downtown to make sure that it's, downtown is a great place to be even in the winter. Even in the winter, those dang winters. <laughs> Right. I'm not, I like the summer. I like the sunny in 75. <laughs> I, I, same, same. <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit just how Bike Link got started? We've seen some other um, bike sharing companies, you know, nationwide and up in Omaha. So how did that actually get started? Did you take it from, did you take the idea from another place or how did you make Bike Link unique? 
Yeah, so it was it was a collaborative type of effort, right? And so here's the main players that happened to make Bike Link what it is today. Uh, it kind of started out as a University of Nebraska student-led initiative. Um, so some uh, of the students that, that were in uh, student government at ASUN um, had experienced bike share in their own communities where they were from. And so they started asking, this would be a really great place to have a bike share. What, what would happen if we looked into this? Uh, they went to uh, the city of Lincoln and the planning department thought that was a really great idea. So let's kind of explore that. Um, so they started looking around and reading about bike share and learning about bike share. And then that's when they met B-Cycle. And B-Cycle is a, a nationwide bike sharing vendor. Um, essentially, it's a Trek company. So a lot of people know what Trek is. It's regular Trek bikes. These bikes are specially made to be super durable, anti-theft resistant, work really well all the time. Um, and so that was the vendor that ended up being chosen after all of the public input about where stations should go and what bike share should look like if we wanted docked, station-based, or dockless on the side of the street. Um, and that's how Bike Link came to be. Uh, it was definitely a group effort, um, City of Lincoln, university, public input, uh, private companies, and then I'm part of a nonprofit from Heartland Bike Share um, in Omaha, and they are the nonprofit that operates this. And so uh, we are we are the folks that make sure the bikes are where people need to be. The stations work all the time, um, and so it's definitely a community effort. And 85,000 rides in two years wouldn't be possible if all of these folks didn't work together so brilliantly. So uh, we definitely appreciate all of that. Do you have batteries on all of the bikes and the stations? Yeah, so we only have five e-bikes, and so that's have batteries on board that we, we recharge and put into the field every day. They go for about 30 miles before you need to change the battery, and so usually we get a couple days out of each battery charge for those five bikes. Uh, the rest, 105 bikes, are all pedal bikes. But the cool part about our stations is, is that 20 of them are solar-powered, and then one of them is AC-powered. Um, but all of the stations have a very, very, uh, very trickle-ish type of usage of the electricity that's on board. And so when the sun charges those batteries uh, during the day, um, it takes about a light bulb's worth of power uh, constantly to power the station because it's in a standby mode. And so it's wow. kind of like if we had 21 light bulbs, uh, household light bulbs that we just left on all the time, which sounds like a lot, but considering how large these stations are and what you're doing with them, it's not. And it's solar powered. Um, and then, but if you check out a bike, the most interesting part about that is if you check out a bike, it takes about as much energy to check out a bike as it does to make toast. Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah. That is crazy, you wouldn't think of that. No, you would not. These big, huge stations, and, and that's, that's all it takes. And so it's a very sustainable, uh, renewable way to get around Lincoln and, and have that environmental impact on our community in a positive manner. We've saved over 2.5 million uh, helium-filled balloons, or, well, carbon-filled balloons, uh, from being released in the atmosphere in Lincoln. So that's huge. And that's that is huge. small changes that people can make um, that make a big difference over time. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thanks for asking. So if someone wanted to be involved in Bike Link to donate or to sponsor, how would they do that? Yeah, so you can do it a couple of different ways. Uh, we have a website, bikelink.com. And so if you go there, we have a donate page. And so you can choose uh, whatever amount you want to donate. And that goes to Heartland Bike Share, the operator of the Bike Share program to continue the best possible experience that we can give you. Uh, you can also become a member of the Bike Share itself. And so that helps us, but it helps you too. Right. And so there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can just donate out of the kindness of your heart. Um, it makes you feel good and stuff like that. Or you can become a member and actually use the bikes uh, that we're talking about and improve Lincoln and yourself and help us in the process. So uh, we definitely love members, uh, but it's not like we won't take donations as well. <laughs> and so something really relevant today with COVID-19 happening. Have you seen any um, changes in how people rent a bike or do the bike share program or what changes have you seen? Yeah, so we have uh, we have seen our ridership go down, but I mean, that's obviously 
has a lot to do with people not being in their offices and, and mm -hmm. campus being closed. And so we want, uh, first and foremost, people to be safe, right? Um, and so what we've done is we've stayed active the whole time. Uh, we're an essential service, kind of like the bus service, uh, kind of like any kind of public transit would be. And so what we do is we remind users to make sure that they're keeping track of where their hands are, disinfecting those uh, contact services, washing your hands, keeping them away from your face. Um, and then you can see on the side, we have a technician, uh, his name is Brody, and he's fantastic at keeping the bikes clean. Uh, and so every, every uh, we have a routine basis where we go around to every station, uh, all 21 stations, all 110 bikes, and we disinfect them on a routine basis so that people know that our bikes are safe. Um, and so then we also remind users to take that responsibility on themselves uh, to make sure that you're washing your hands, that you're disinfecting surfaces, that you're maintaining that social distance, um, you know, of six feet or more from pedestrians, from other cyclists um, and everything. And so just be as safe as we can as a community so that we can get through this together. Right. That's right, we're all in this together, just we like are. Link. Yep. So <clears throat> is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? Yeah, actually, um, so I wanted to share kind of our favorite moments, right? Like, uh, I, I know that a lot of times people, when they, when they do this, we all do things for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, bike share, it's good for the environment. It's, it's, it's sustainable transit. Um, it makes you feel like part of the community. Walkable spaces are what we all want to be part of. Um, and so it's all those kind of things. But I wanted to share a few of my favorite moments with you guys uh, because I think they're fantastic. So the picture at the top left, um, his name is Brad, and he happened to be one of the first people to check out a bike link bike after we uh, unofficially launched the week before with a very limited demo fleet to kind of work out the kinks. Um, and I happened to see him check it out and it was just one of those things where it makes your heart go, oh, people are actually going to use this, right? Like you're so excited <laughs> when you get that first checkout. And as you'll notice uh, behind him in the screen, someone else is checking out a bike. And so we saw that kind of usage right away. We saw that kind of usage right away and we've continued to see that embracement by the Lincoln community of riding the bike share bikes around. Uh, the picture in the middle is this little boy who was super, super thrilled that his parents could now ride bikes with him. Um, a, lot oh. of kids, a lot of times kids have bikes, you know, and we don't think about how much they'd like to ride with their parents. Um, and so for him, that just made him so happy that his parents could ride bikes with him. And so we put a little B sticker on the head tube of his bike. You can kind of see it there. And he was super thrilled because then they all had bike link bikes, uh, which was uh, just heartwarming. Um, the top picture on the right was the first time I ever saw somebody with a personal vehicle with a bike link sticker on it that I didn't know them. Um, and so that is funny uh, because that's just like, wow, they like us enough to put a sticker on their car. I just thought that that was so great. That is, that's awesome. It was. Um, and then down at the bottom, uh, once a year, actually twice a year, uh, I teach a uh, Ollie class, which is the lifelong learners class through UNL, um, a lot of times technology for a certain demographics can be more um, intimidating than for other people. And so uh, we teach the class, we go through how to check out a bike share bike, how to ride a bike share bike safely in traffic and in bike lanes, things that they um, may, may want to know but haven't, haven't really asked, you know? And so and then we take them out for ice cream because ice cream and bikes are fun if you're six or 60, it doesn't That's matter. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and so that's always thrilling. And then the last one in the corner, the left-hand side, um, that is how wonderful uh, Lincoln has embraced the Bike Share program and how much we try to embrace the community back. Um, and so we make sure that, you know, we got the most trips per bike per day for a nationwide system of 100 to 300 bikes for a B-Cycle program. Uh, we also community impact award through DLA. And so that was just the impact that we're having downtown with those transit options and being able to ride a bike around instead of maybe some of the other stuff. Um, and then, you know, obviously we launched a bike share program, which is no small feat in of itself. Um, you know, it's definitely one of those things where a lot of little moments built this amazing thing that Lincoln has now. And to continue on building uh, the great foundation that we have and, and continuing to advance and promote and grow and uh, make Lincoln better is what we're all about. So 
um, we're just proud to be part of the community and proud to be part of the LES Sustainability Festival. Thanks for having us. Well, thank you so much. We're so happy that you were able to be here today and for be bringing your all of your information to us. We love having you in the community. And so it's such an awesome thing that you're doing and really making an impact. So thank you so much. Thank you.